I've built a lot of Hemis, but this one here is very special to me, and it belongs to my brother. This is a beautiful car, isn't it? You know, I built this engine 10 years ago. 1970 Challenger, put a four speed in it, 960, 426 Hemi, and my favorite colors, black with a red interior. Yeah, I've built a few of these, quite a few. This belongs to a client that uh, I built the engine for someone else. They put it in the car, my job was just to get it started. But he's had it for so many years, and now my job is just to figure out what's that little clicky noise on the right side. It probably needs in a rocker arm adjustment, so I'm just gonna remove the uh, valve cover. See what's uh, probably needs an adjustment or something. Unless we got a sticky lifter, I'm not sure. So when we take off the shaker, which takes a lot of work, you got seven bolts. But you know what? It's worth every minute because the shaker is a shaker. There is no question about it. Who doesn't love a shaker on a Mopar e-body? I do, Cuda or Challenger. And this is one of them, you guys. Pretty unique. Is it an original car? No, it's not. But it is a beautiful car after all. After all, it's a beautiful car with the colors, combo, engine, four speed, pistol grip, then a 60, what more can you ask for? And it's a convertible on top of that. Okay, let's take off the shaker. A lot of work involved when it comes to a shaker. It shows it hasn't been removed for quite a while. Here we go. Here we go. Then you got the two wing nuts. Then you're gonna see the famous two four, two four barrels. Just give me a sec, I'll take off the breather hose. Then we'll lift it right off. And here we go. I believe the cable's off for the, tra for the uh, cold air door. <clears throat> there you are. Isn't that a pretty sight? One of my favorites. Now we're gonna remove this valve cover and check the uh, rocker adjustment. Yeah, it's an old engine. It looks pretty clean, but it's been, been built a long time ago. You guys wanna hear it? I'll get it started. Listen to it. There's a little ticket noise right here. Okay, so we're gonna remove this valve cover. I'm not gonna get it too hot. So let's uh, turn it off. Okay. So I'm gonna, uh, you know, this is a, 100% street Hemi, exhaust manifolds, flat tap and hydraulic cam. But if you guys want to see another Hemi that goes racing in, in a charade, it belongs to my brother. It's on the dyno right now, it is a 426 Hemi, just like this one. He runs in a class race, A stock automatic. Of course, you guys, when you build an engine for an HRA, it depends on what class you're in, like he runs in a stock class. There's not too many modifications you can do. It has to be practically a stock engine to run into the, uh, their class. If you guys want to take a good look, we'll take a look, walk into the dining room and take a look what we got. Come. We 
he's got an engine here. It's called a stalker. It runs in stock class. That means everything has to be stock. In other words, the cars have to weigh a certain weight. The cam lift cannot be more than what is a factory cam lift in 490 lift intake. You cannot surpass that. And he has to run stock carburetors with the choke plate, with a stock intake. You can run any ignition system you want. You can run headers. But besides that, everything on the internals has to be within factory specifications. Sure, you try to make horsepower. As long as you know, if you go with the rule book, you're all good. Because don't forget, if you do win a championship in the NHRA, they're gonna tear you down and check everything. So if everything is legal, you won the championship. And if you cheated in any way, you're gonna be on the blacklist and you're thrown out. So when you build a stalker, you gotta make sure you go by the book. So this is what my brother and I do. We just build an engine, go according to the rule book, and we do the best we can. We've got an engine here. I want to rev it to 7,300 RPM. I will show no numbers. Why? Because it's secret. It's my brother's engine. He doesn't want to show it to anybody. It's like other stalkers. When they build things, they don't want to tell you anything. So we're going to do the same thing. They don't tell us, we won't tell them. So being on YouTube, we're not gonna show anything. We're just gonna show an engine, 426 revving 7,300 RPM. And the only thing I wanna make sure is that the secondaries in the carburetor with the above camera, that they open up. So we're gonna do a double check on that with my brother, and that's as far as we're gonna go. Yeah, you know, you're gonna have people telling you, ah, I got a 350 that could do more than that. But you know what, every engine has a limit. So this is what we have, this is what we're racing, and this is what we're working with. So. Is it done yet? Are we gonna do more research? We're not gonna say so, because you know what? We're still working on it. We're still having a few tricks we wanna do here and there, and we wanna keep it a secret, and we're gonna keep it to ourselves, and this is what we're gonna do. Are we finalized it yet? I don't think so, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're just gonna keep working on it until we're happy. But in the meantime, let me just rev it at 7,300 so you folks can see it. racing Mopars or should I say Hemis since 1974 when we first bought our 1971 Hemi Cuda. We used to go street racing. Sure those days were quiet, no traffic, no cars and it was easy to do street racing. Now of course today we won't do it. We're going to be at the racetrack. So this is a perfect example. We are no longer on the street. We're on the racetrack. So we took NHRA. This is the category is running a Stalker Hemi Challenger. And this is where we are right now. We're racing on the track where it's nice, it's safe, and of course, more enjoyable. You know, I remember when we used to do street racing back in the mid 70s, you know, we had a Hemi Cuda, we had to fix it up a little bit. And we had our own gangs. We had our gangs in central Montreal, eastern Montreal, the West Island, and, uh, and, and an East End gang, and we all had our gangs, and we all had a few cars in our gang, and we were known to be one of the quickest cars on the island of Montreal. We used to race every once in a while on a Friday night, midnight, Saturday night, after midnight. Yes, there was a common street in the back of the airport where it was a dead end, no traffic, no lights, no buildings, no industrial buildings, nothing there, but it was safe, you know. That, that, that's what I call street racing, not street corner to corner like in the city. I'm talking about back at the airport. That's what I meant by street racing because it wasn't a track. It was an old road back at the airport. It was safe, it was quiet, but you know, then again, there were no many cars those days. And today, of course, we're at the track like this one here with the regulations on an NHRA engine. But back in those days, we had some good times, good gangs, and a lot of guys would say, uh, you know, if I'm gonna race a car, I like to race the Panaritas brothers with the Hemi Cuda. Yes, you know, we've won many, many times, but you know, and it was fun, it was good. We know the best thing was like, you know, all you had to do was build a little bit of horsepower, but the most important thing was traction. If you didn't have traction, you wouldn't win any race. So we worked on a lot of times on traction, put weight in the back of the car, you know, make sure to lighten up the front end, and you know, and have a good time. And that's how we got brought up into racing. And then now, now we're at the racetrack, racing with the rule book. We had a few good years on the street in the street racing. 
But now we're over 20 years at the racetrack and we're having a great time. It is fun at the track. You meet a lot of people. You meet a lot of people with knowledge, nice cars, fast cars. And it's a good time, you know, and that's the place to be at the racetrack. You meet all kinds of people, good friends, and all these races, you create a lot of new friendship with a lot of people, a lot of teams, which is good. It's not the same like back in the old days when we had our street gangs competing with each other. Today, it's different. We go to the track, meet people, have a great time, and it's safe, and you know, it's, it's very rewarding. So you guys, if you guys go to the track, enjoy yourselves, that would be one of the best places to be at. You know, we are, we are four brothers. I got my brother, George, he's the youngest. Then I got my brother, Jimmy. Then it's me, then my oldest brother, Philip, who owns this engine with the Hemi Challenger. You know, they all have Wally trophies from NHRA, and they all have won a few championships. Philip has won the most of them. Me, I've won a few, but never won the Wally trophy because I do most of the underhood work on these cars, and I do most of the tampering. Any of my brothers winning the Wally trophy, I'm behind the scenes underneath the hood. So you know what, when they win the Wally Trophy, I feel like I won it also. And, and I just wanted to say, there was one event, I don't know if I said this before, we had a race at Naperville, and all four of us were racing, four brothers, and the last six cars for the event were two other people and us four brothers. We were six of us. That was, that was a miracle. We were four brothers and we all had a car at the finals with six cars. Okay, eventually at the end of the race, Philip won everything. But just to say you, just to say, you know, six cars and the four brothers were all there on the racetrack. That is something astonishing that we've done. So, you know, we've got a lot of history with racing. We grew up with this. This is what we've been doing in all our lives. This is our passion. So I got a nephew now racing a Challenger. I got my brother Phil racing a Challenger. I got myself the Kowalski Challenger. I got the Hellcat. And this is what we're all about, you guys. Building, having fun with these uh, muscle cars. And this is what we're all about. All right, my brother just stepped in. So we're just about to get fuel to put in. And my brother runs a uh, Octane 112 by uh, Sonoco. So he's gonna bring it in, fill it up, so we get tested. So here's my brother it's Phil. The thing about real quick. Is it quick. Or is it Yeah, it is. This is uh, the guy's brand. It's name on the guy who sells it. They see right. they put a sticker on it. Oh, this is what? Yeah, yeah it's just an Yeah. All right. 112 Octane. Yeah, yeah. Let it, this is let it guys. Yeah, it's not oxygenated. We're not allowed to use oxygenated fuel in, in a tray. Yeah. This is blue, look at it, check it out. It's quite <laughs> blue. It smells like candy. For 73, it's about 3,000. That's right. It's perfect. Okay. It's right on the money. Let's double check. Yeah, it. we need to go that one because we're trying new headers today. Okay. 43 to 7,300. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay. Do we have anything? I want to make sure everything's on. All two sensors off. We've got the fuel. Okay. Here we go. We're going to do our testing from 4,300 RPM till 7,300 RPM. So. We're gonna just get it warmed up. This is the original carburetors on the Hemi engine, so we're just gonna do a little testing. We also wanna see an overview on the rear velocity, uh, I was trying to say the uh, air doors, make sure they open fully on this test. And at the same time, we're trying out these headers just for an example. Yeah, second set. Hooker headers? Hooker headers, yes, these are hooker headers. So yeah. let's get it warmed up, what do you say? Let's go for it. Okay, let's it's go. Nice, beautiful, nice beautiful day, by mean pressure is high. It should be a good thing It's not raining today, which is a good sign. <laughs> let's go, Nick. Okay, let's go. Let's warm it up, and then uh, we got to the stand. Yeah, we're going to need some fuel. Get some fuel leaks.
have to uh, warm up the last one. Yeah, yeah. Better warm up. They take a long time to warm up, eh? Yeah. That's why I took a pump off. I know. Oh, it's a lot of metal, I don't want to catch fire there. Warm up. Yeah, this new rod there. Well, Where's your air cleaner? Do you have your air cleaner? I have it, I have it upstairs. You want me to go get it? Okay, watch yeah, the water. Yeah, my, my, my air cleaner. No, yours is there. That's the one for the uh, elder block. That's the one for the elder block. No, the other one. The one I just bought. Yeah, let's put it on. Okay, I'll go get it, I'll go get it. We've got a few different base plates. We've got a base plate for the elder block carburetors, which have a bigger opening. I gotta go get the other uh, base plate for the original AFB carburetors, which I have upstairs. I just bought this lately from uh, Ty Tommy the Crico man from Ontario. So this is the one made for the AFBs, and this one we're gonna put it on, do our testing. Here we go. Uh, brand much new. Nicer. This one is brand new reproduction from uh, Tommy uh, the Crico, the Crico guy from Ontario. You wanna make a pull now? Or wait, wait to warm I, up your I want to warm up the oil a bit. Yeah, this is the oil yeah, temperature. Yeah, yeah, and this time we got the uh, oil temperature sensor connected to this application. You know, everything counts on this. Hey, just uh, here. Put a lot on it. Put a lot. Get some heat inside. That impressed start. That impressed start, okay. Still, it's ready to go. Okay, now, shut it down. Let's put the oxygen and cool it down too at the same time. Okay, all right. It should be ready. And I'll check the gas too. All right, here we go. I'll put the O2 sensor on. I left it where it was. Where is it? Uh, 32, 33 in there. Okay. I didn't touch it exactly where we left off. 34 was the best one we had. Man. 
Yeah, I left it there where we made the last test. I didn't okay, touch. Fine. I didn't. We'll see. Okay. I didn't touch anything. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's make a pull now. One for each other. Okay. Do it now. Well, that's where we ran them out around there somewhere. Yeah. Why not? I don't get too hot. Okay. Can we make one test right now? Yeah, go ahead. I'm ready. Said it didn't come on. Oh man, we forgot to put her on, man. Uh, uh, I gotta, Anyways, we're gonna make it off. We're going to. Anyways. All right, let it cool Maybe down. Try be okay. So far, is it those carbons work better? Yeah. Uh, uh, now we're we're gonna check after with the uh, camera. For pressure. That's not bad at all. Is it in the air cleaner now? What changed it? The air cleaner, we never had the air cleaner on. The base, the base plate, yeah, the base we never plate, had the yeah. base plate on. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, it's, it's, we're, yeah, in the, yeah. we're in the right direction. Uh, uh, that's it, that's it. Go to the next one. Oh, two sensors on now. Better, uh, let the water cool down to the same temperature. We wanted to check what the fuel pressure was, eh? I think I should do before I put it in here. Kill the oxygen, you know, without putting it on. Nah, it's gonna work. I, I Look, hope it's, we didn't kill it. I hope no, we didn't it's kill working, it. it's working. Look, let, let the temperature cool down a bit. We're gonna run it again. Oh it's working right now. No, that's good. It is there, eh? Stayed at 1.4. Wow. Torque because we have those headers on. Hey, the headers. That's why you lost torque. Yeah. They say headers. Yeah, they're bigger headers, eh? Yeah, but it, yeah, bigger. But look, it's a higher yeah, it's RPM. True, it's true. We it's a headers. headers, man. It's a headers. Yeah. Let's make another pull. Okay. Let's let's we're go. ready. Let's make another pull. Okay. Put the sensors on. Oh my God, makes a big difference those headers. Yeah. Awesome. That means you have no pulling power when you shift gears. How's your pressure? Good? I'm gonna check for sounds. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can tell we changed headers and uh, we lost story to put the other headers we had. And don't forget with the other. Uh, Hitters. We lost, we, we lost, we lost 25, almost, uh, yeah. 
What have we got there? Five, eight, 20 pounds. Yeah. Foot oh, pounds. Yeah. 20 foot pounds. 20 foot pounds of torque. Wow, those headers work, the other headers, Nick. The other headers work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are uh, no no. Yeah. We got the oh. horsepower, but we lost torque. So the other headers are better designed. Yeah, and those carbons are better too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys, this is all top secret, but. No, it's uh, okay. <laughs> It's all top shit. No, this that's is okay. A lot of people play around with hitters. They, they, they don't. No, I mean, no, I'm just saying. I mean, we don't want to show anything here. That's why. No, no. Hitters play a big role. Carbons play a big role. Oh, yeah. Everything counts. It's, you a know, it's a whole combination that works together, you know? Yeah, we'd be playing with elder block carbons. When, when you change the cam, maybe you need, maybe this hitters will work. Maybe the other carbons will work. So that's why we have a dyno, Nick. <laughs> that's right. You know, so... One way to find out is try them back to back, put it back on the dyno, and keep going at it. The other heads are rich collectors. This one don't have rich collectors, then. Show me. This. Oh, the, uh, what, you see? the, the Coke bottles. Uh, you see, this is this what bad design headers are. You cannot judge, you cannot take it off and put another collector. Shorten it. Yeah. Here, for you viewers to yeah, understand. See? This is called a rich collector, you see? You see this one you can take off and put on this one. It's, it's a solid headers. piece, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a solid piece. And we can't play with it too and much. And this one here is adjustable. Yeah, or we can put a reducer here, but do you want to do that really? Uh, well, you know, and uh, these headers perform what? 20 foot pounds of torque more over the hooker headers. Yeah. And which we had done at, on the previous tests. And this one makes about one horsepower more. Two, one about, or two horsepower more. Yeah. But we lost 20 foot pounds of torque. So we lost torque with these headers. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And, they're, and the headers are fixed. They're not adjustable. We can't do much with it. We're yeah. stuck. But this one's we can play with a. We can take the collector off, change the Shorten merge. It. We can open it up more. Yeah. And this individuals, we can do more, a little bit more things with this. You got more options with this, and also this is yeah. in pieces, so it's easier for installation. Yeah. This this is a fixed header. You can't do much. Oh with well. It. So not one thing we know that these carburetors are working with these a, original A and B carburetors. And the base plate too. And the base plate. Yeah. This is made for not more for your Tia hood, but. Uh, it fits a Hemi, yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should go see Jacques and get those headers fixed now. Yeah. The new ones. The 304 stainless steel headers. That not, is. Not mild steel, the old headers. They rust and the rust comes out yeah, with the look, triangle. There's the example right there. Look at the hook yeah, head, it's all rusted. Yeah. But this this part is in stainless steel. This is a good part. As you can see, folks, right here. This is mild steel. Only the collectors had stainless steel, not the header. The tube itself. It's just a uh, mild steel, but yeah. the uh, stainless steel is only the uh, extension. But if you guys really want to set a great he uh, headers, the tubing should be made out of stainless steel, which is one of the 304. 304. 304. So if you yeah. want a good quality yeah. header, yeah. 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 that doesn't rust at all, yeah. it's yeah. a 304 stainless steel. As a matter of fact, when you park the car and you create rust inside the tube, the moment you start that engine, it creates vacuum. So that dust, rust that builds in the tube, breaks loose, it goes back into your chamber, runs down the cylinder rings, and scratches cylinders. Okay, so much for the air filter, it's useless yeah. when you have a rusted headers. That's right, so now what we're doing here is taking yeah. chances with these headers, but again, we're doing some R&D right now. And all the new cars that they build headers for, they're all sand steel 304. Mouse does not exist anymore. It's all the old cars, and we're trying to remove this stuff, old stuff. Like if you look at these hookers, we, uh, when we stole them in the car, we had to do a few dents here and there to make them fit. Yeah, yeah. And we had to make custom made We had to flanges. replace the flanges also. In this yeah. case, we had back then. Well, it's an old set of headers we have, and now we use them for testing hey, in our dyno. from the 70s. It's That's really right. 70s, we've we've yeah. had these really headers for quite a few years. Yeah. yeah. So bottom line is we still got work to do on this. My brother's plans right now to build a new set of headers for this engine out of a stainless steel, so that's in the process. So we're deciding to go with this design or that design. We do not know yet, but you have a good idea right La now. Last Thursday night, we tried uh, Carter carburetors from Elderbrock. They worked very well, but we lost uh, power, is it? Uh, power, yeah. We, we lost, lost about power. 10, 12 horsepower. That's right. We lost literally about maybe 10 pounds of torque. That is correct. There was nothing wrong with the carburetors. They were just too efficient for this engine because we're not making enough power, enough RPMs to take advantage of them. Right now, we have the original carburetors on and they're working really well for now. Until we start putting more bigger cams, maybe more head work, and maybe we might need those carburetors are going to work down the road later on in the future. Right? That is correct. 
So in other words, you, when you upgrade the package, who knows where we're gonna go with carbines after that. Yeah, yeah. But don't forget you guys, this is a stalker. We have a factory size intake valves, exhaust valves, stock intake, no porting allowed, no, uh, uh, what do you call porting at all whatsoever in the intake manifold, in the cylinder heads, in the chamber, nothing so far. Well, so if you want a stock class and if the lift is 490 lift like you came from the factory, you can't go more than a 490 lift. And this is what is my brother's working with. That's yeah. all. Less than half an inch lift on this engine. <laughs> We're doing pretty well. Well, what is it? What horsepower we make? We're no, making yes. over 600. Just over 600 well. horsepower is not bad. Not bad for what we got. Yeah. But there's more room to improve. There's, yeah, there's potential. My competition has a lot more horsepower than me. <laughs> you know, we've, we've taken this engine right now in front of your eyes at 7,300 RPM. Yeah. But the past three years ago, my brother, my brother and I built an engine, we, we took it to 8,000 RPM. Passing through, pa that's passing. through the lights. Oh, oh 77, yeah. 76, 77. 76, 7700 yeah. RPM at the finish line at the quarter mile. Yeah, yeah. The other guys, they finish over eight. Eight, over 8,000? Oh, oh, yeah. With that pan. <laughs> so in other words, that pan there. <laughs> yeah, we got to keep. Original pan, no special exterior lines. No, we nothing. just, we just uh, yeah. put a little deeper pan. Yeah. Just to keep you all away from the crank. Yeah. Going at 8,000 RPM at the finish line is pretty unique. Okay, Nick, what do you want to do next? I well, think I'm done, really. Uh, well, I, I, I think I, you got the numbers you wanted to know with this carburetor, yeah, yeah, with these headers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now do your update. We know the headers want. work, guys. The headers we have to. Okay, so now you can work with Jock on the headers. Yeah. And uh, we'll take it from there. I'll take a look at the. Uh, Check it, baby. And we're, you know, we still have the uh, factory Dyn cast iron rock arms. The dyno data. I gotta check the dyno data here. Check your dyno data, Philip. You, you do your homework. Go, go over the mechanical stuff. My job to make sure nothing lets loose here. That's my job. And uh, we're gonna do some further searching. My brother and I, we're not done yet. He's got other things in mind. They're gonna come in very soon. So we're not gonna let it sit here. We're gonna take it apart, do some research, and uh, we got plans to do further work, and uh, we'll take it slowly at a time. Best part is it stay together. That's when I'm happy. You know, when it comes to installing a camshaft in this particular engine for my brother, everything has to be measured. Yeah, yeah. Because everything is a close tolerance valve. Piston to valve is very close. So, you know, when you're revving that high, you gotta be very, very sure. You take your you see, measurements well. You see, you, you see your peak torque moved up, eh? 100, and, Wait. Your peak, and your peak power went up 100. They both moved up. Before it's 49, 6 and 9. Now it's yeah. 5,000, 7,000 with those headers. It's a headers. It is, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. It's all in the exhaust, eh? This is where the muscle car engine started, right here. This is the original Hemi that started the muscle car. It was the 426 Hemi back in 64. It wasn't the 5.7 Hemi's on the having their pickup in the Dodge Rams or back in the old Imperials and the DeSotos. No, no. This is where the muscle era started. 1964, 66 on the street, was a 426 Hemi. It's right here. This is the true blue 426 Hemi. This is the revolution that started everything for Chrysler. NASCAR in 64 and on the street, 1966. My brother and I always had Hemis since 1974, since we first bought our 1971 Hemi Cuda. Until today, we still have Hemis. Why don't you show them this uh, unique feature that we have here. Most of the guys, when they buy uh, MSD Bullet to Subaru, it's, it's always high and it hits the air conditioning. We got one, like original one. Yes. And we, we modified to, it to be low. We it. This way. Everybody yeah. has a long neck. Yeah, if you guys so ever ugly. know. That's true. For we no had to, reason. We, we had to buy a ready to run to Subaru and turn it into uh, yeah, a low, uh, uh, low, low profile of the Subaru. Like, yeah. the, like, like original, like so, what's supposed to be. Yes. To fit underneath the air cleaner. Even the distributor is the one that sells us that he wanted. Uh, they were too tall, so we didn't want a tall distributor, so we wanted a short distributor. Yeah, but there's no reason. The reason for that That's right. was for, for the intake manifolds are tall, That's so right. they need to be out of the way. Yeah. But in our case, we don't have to be out of the way. No, no. So, so we did our own thing. Yeah, it looks nicer, much cleaner. It looks of course. More, you know. Keep it more simple, too. These are 1970 Genuine Hemi carburetors. And my brother here, is, all he's done is Stop play with there. jets. Here we go. And we're not allowed to remove that. We're not allowed to remove the uh, choke plate. No, nope, it's plate? right here. We're not yeah. allowed to remove the choke plate. And it's an NHRA stalker. Here's the choke plate that came on the rear carpet on all four 26 Amy's. 
and by right we have no right to remove it and here it is still in it's place. All, it's all the, uh, it's all the stupid yeah, this is all genuine. Check it out, you guys. They're all carbonated, but they work like a champ. Yeah. The only yeah. modification we did was we added two air fuel mixture screws just to help the idle. Only because we have a high duration oh, camshaft. We changed the boosters. We changed the boosters. That's about it. Yeah, we changed the boosters, yeah. Nothing else, not much. Not much. Besides that, it's all genuine. Original look, valve covers from the 60s we got. Yeah. Uh, cast iron heads. Yeah, cast iron cylinder heads. From Mopar. Straight from Mopar Performance. Stock valve sizes, intake exhaust. Yeah. We're still using the cast iron rockers. Not bad, not bad at all. Cast iron block, of course. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to say, uh, I want to thank our viewers for spending some time with us here with my brother Phil with his NHRA Stalker engine. And I want to thank you guys. And uh, till next time. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Yeah. <laughs> The 426 Hemi won the hearts of the Panaritas brothers 50 years ago. And even now, this legendary engine holds their passion as they work to squeeze out another horsepower or two for their next trip to the track. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Vix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.